How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. We are on episode 25, and today we are finally starting with our date. We go through and we make our components for the date and start getting them set up. That way, next episode, we can go through and start adding in the logic for them. So let's go ahead and hop into VS Code, and I'll show you guys how to do that. So we have our input and we are able to verify and update it and everything like that. So if we type in, it goes red, all of that good stuff on both of these. However, now we need to deal with the date input and the date input is gonna be a little bit more complicated because Twitter does not use the normal date selector. They make it look better, they make it look uh, good and pretty. So that's what we're going to be working on now. Let's go ahead and hop into VS Code. First thing I wanna do is go ahead and go into our interfaces. We want to create a new interface called DOB. This is going to store date of birth information. So go ahead and export interface DOB. And this is going to be very simple. It's just going to have a month, which is a number. It's going to have a day, which is a number. And it's going to have a year, which is a number. All right, go ahead and save that. Now, inside of our validated input, we're going to make a new file. I'm going to call this register date actually no inside of our components for register i'm going to make a new folder i'm going to call this register date input i'm going to make a file called register date input dot tsx and inside of here we are going to of course import react from react we're going to say export const uh, register input is a fc or react dot fc component equals this arrow function and we'll return a div all right there we go we have our very basic component like normal let me fix this really quick so now all we're going to have in here is just this div for the time being We'll go ahead and put a class name on here just for the heck of it. This is going to be called register dash date. So now inside of our register date, we're going to have a bunch of different components, which is where we're going to actually go back into our validated input and make a new file. It's going to be called validated um, date selector. So this is going to be how we select the date. Um, this is going to take in a few things. So first things first, let's go ahead and import react from react. We're also going to import our styled input box and our styled input label, because we will need those in a second. Oh, styled. Then we're going to say, of course, export const, and we are going to say validated uh, date selector this is a react dot functional components equal to nothing for the time being and then we will return a div as well just because that's what i like to start out with and then inside here we have a class name equal to style so actually we'll just do this this is going to be a custom class name based off of the actual props Let's go ahead and add in the props interface. So interface, this is going to be called validated date selector props. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to have a style of string. We are going to have a valid Boolean. We are going to have a name string. And finally, we are going to have a dropdown method that we'll see what it does later, but this is going to return jsx.element. It's gonna be an array of JSX elements. So let's go ahead and import those. So we're going to go ahead and go to the FC. This is gonna be validated date selector props. And inside here, we'll break those apart. So it's gonna be style, there's going to be valid, there's going to be name, and there's going to be drop down. So cool, cool. And then we are going to go ahead and have some state. So let's go ahead and import use state at the top. And we're going to say const. And this is going to be active and set active. This 
this is how we are going to try to change some styles and things like that it's going to be use state it's going to be a boolean we're going to set this as false to start all right so now let's do some cs or let's do some actual html so inside of here the class name is going to be style so this is going to be so we know how big to make it essentially that's really all it's going to be doing we're going to have a styled input box inside of here active is going to be equal to active valid will equal to valid and then we will open this up and then inside here we'll have a styled input label styled input label color will start out as gray our active will equal true this one we're just going to override it's going to be active all the time and valid is going to equal valid There we go. And then inside here, we will have the name. So go ahead and say the name of the dropdown. And then below the styled input, we are going to have our select. We'll have an on change that we'll create in a little bit. For now, we'll just do nothing. And we are going to need an on focus as well. So on focus again. We'll just do nothing for the time being and set it up in a little bit. And then finally on blur, once again, we'll have to set this up later, but this is going to be uh, changing styles and such. And then inside of here, we'll have our drop down. right now. It obviously does nothing, but we will fix that in a little bit. Now we've got our basic component set up. We need to go ahead and be able to set the on change and set the on focus. So first thing, const change value. This is going to equal, it's going to take in an E, which is a react, whoops, react.change events. This is going to come from a HTML select, select element like so, and do one of these. Now what we're going to do whenever we change, we will go ahead and say console.log for the time being, we're just going to say dispatch this change to a reducer. I've already kind of planned ahead a little bit. We are going to be using Redux very soon. We'll console.log. We're going to say uh, value colon and we'll say e.target dot value and if we wanted to we could also say um if we wanted to we could also do one of these um i guess we don't have a value we might need that later so i'm gonna go ahead and set this up i think we technically need this const uh value um a set value equal to new state i think this is a number and then we'll set to zero to start and then we'll say set value e oops, e dot target dot value and there's a trick you can do with javascript if you say plus whoops maybe i'm using a different keyboard so my fingers are slightly off you say plus it'll turn it into a actual um it'll change it into a number so that is our change now let's go ahead and also set up our toggle active toggle active equal to, and this is going to be E react dot focus events. So we saw these previously. This is also going to come from HTML select element like so. And then this one is just going to toggle the active on and off. So set active to not active like so very, very simple. And now we can change the on change to change value and the on focus will be toggle active and on blur will also be toggle active. So that is our basic valid date selector. We're going to use different versions of the selector inside of our register date input to take in different information. So that's exactly what we want to do next. Let's go ahead and hop back over to register date input. 
And inside of here, we'll go ahead and import that validated date selector. Import validated date selector. Um, where to go? Validated uh, date selector. And we're going to have three of these. So we'll say validated date selector. We need a style. So style equal to this one's going to be validated month. So this one's going to hold information about our month. Valid will start out as true. We'll set this up to actually calculate valid. Name is going to be equal to month. And finally, our dropdown is just going to return a empty array for the time being. We will set it up to return something different. So just do this and then return a empty array. Although we might have to do one of these, whoops, to get this to work. So in a little bit, we will go ahead and set this up to actually return what we want. And then we'll go ahead and close this guy off. So that is our first validated selector. We also need a validated selector for our day. So validated day, this will be day. And we'll set this up in a second. Then we need a validated selector for a year. So validated year, year and return. So now we're not gonna be able to see anything because we haven't put it inside of our component yet. But if we go ahead and throw this inside of our register modal, so go to our front end and we go to register form one, register form one, and we throw this in here. So validated um, date selector. Like, oh, that's not what I wanted. I want, um, what was it called? Register, register date input. That shouldn't take any props. And now we'll see that we have day, month, year. It still works whenever we click on active, like as we expect. And Twitter has it so that it's up like this all the time. So we don't have to deal with that as well. So unfortunately that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.